What's up, everybody? We're Microphone Joes. Welcome back to episode two. Adam Ick joining me out always is CJC. No Rev cannot be here with us. We'll read the police report on Monday and see what happened. So, today we're going to do a mini episode because we're down a man. Uh, we're going to keep it kind of short, but we want to talk about GameStop, uh, the changing marketplace. And uh, what will it take to save GameStop specifically? So there was an interesting article on Forbes um, in regards to GameStop potentially going to a blockbuster type, I don't want to put this, Uh, rental program. Yeah, basically it was speculation that GameStop is going the way of blockbuster and their fight against uh, Netflix back in the early early to mid 2000s um the article talks about how xbox game pass has been very well received for the price and what it gives um and in response to that playstation uh they uh, revamped ps now uh, personally i'm not really sure what that means i don't have a playstation atomic they, does yeah they added uh playstation 4 games to it where historically it had just been playstation 3 games the older games okay yep and the article also speculated that Nintendo is expected to announce a similar service very soon. Um, so basically, GameStop is going to be fighting against the developers and publishers of a lot of these games for the market, in mostly in regards to older games, because like Game Pass is mostly you know six to months to a year plus old games, and that's a lot of what GameStop's market is, where they make most of their money. Uh, the Forbes article referenced that last year. Fifty percent of GameStop's revenue was used games, and these these uh, programs are on a month over month basis considerably cheaper and give you more options for the amount of money that you're making. Um, so yeah, it's a it's an interesting article. It's on Forbes. Talk, uh, it'd be a good read for anybody that's interested in the way the gaming market's going to go and we're going to talk about today so you said 50 percent of the revenue um so we won't go into it but i mean a quick google search will show you that there has been a lot of shady practices and policies uh with that particular company not when good, it comes to use games and not good pr the last couple of years yeah we, we won't touch on it too much um you know just them deceiving customers <clears throat> saying that they did not have a copy of a new game and trying to pre- push the used uh former gamestop employees will talk about memos that we receive all the time that kind of raise a lot of eyebrows um but we'll, we'll talk about them potentially going into the market and doing a uh, a streaming game service uh they had actually are going to make their own studio is what i had read uh which kind of presents an interesting question when they're supposed to be pushing everybody else's product uh when they're one of the huge distributors you know is this kind of a conflict of interest you know how how can you sit there and also come push uh, a similar game if you will uh Basically, and, you're, you're saying they could control the, the market inside of their stores yes. for what they're selling. Yeah, how do, how do you be impartial when you've got a horse in the race? Yeah, it, it is a scary thought that you know you could go in there looking for a, let's say, Call of Duty, and they are also producing a you know first-person shooter Call of the Duty same Club. vein, yeah. and they might have 10 copies of it, but their game hasn't sold very well, so they'll tell you, oh, we don't have Call of Duty, but we do have what we're making, and then... You, what do you do? You know, it's do you trust them? Do you believe them? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and you know, they might do something like with grocery stores, where right now everything within GameStop uh, is categorized alphabetically, but they do something like grocery stores where you pay for primo space. And I, I could definitely see them doing that and then putting their games front and center, and yep. then whatever similar to their game is you know buried behind the counter if they even admit to having it at all yeah so i could definitely see that um it's definitely a changing marketplace we've seen you know partnerships with think geek they're trying to to push more uh toys and collectibles cell phone service they have uh cricket wireless i think that you see in their stores a lot i've seen something one of those cell phone services they have a lot of advertisement for that i don't know if they're they have a well, they are partners or if they own part of it or what, but I've seen a lot of that in their stores. Well, I've seen them like resell phones and tablets, and it looks like they got away from it because uh, they had them yeah, on display for a long making, time. I don't think they were making much off of it. I don't think they were either. <laughs> it's so it's it's not that expensive to go trade in for a new phone every year anymore, you know. No, Especially you're... when you spread the cost out over payments instead of one hit. Well, yeah, and a lot of the electronic stores will have trade in deals, whereas GameStop, yeah. you know. They're going to undercut you and not want to pay you a dime, anyways. Yeah, you know, so. I'll give you ten dollars in cash or a hundred dollars in store credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's at the very least, though, we can say GameStop has been very liquid, and you know, I'll give them points for trial and error. 
you know, every time you walk into the store, it seems like they're trying something different or they're restructuring or who knows what. Uh, so the, the partnership with ThinkGeek was probably an intelligent move. Um, I'd actually be interested. I'll have to look it up and see the, what their profit margin is. I mean, I, obviously, we won't be able to see the contract to see what the split is on the merchandise, but to see how much of the revenue per store is actually based off of these figures and shirts and collectibles. Yeah. So that, that'll be interesting. That's something for a later episode. Um, and then what is it going to take to save GameStop? Uh, I mean, right now, I think the biggest thing they have in their corner is this innovation. Is you know, as, as scary as we think it may be, is opening a studio um, and partnering with ThinkGeek and pushing out these collectibles. Because I think that you know, brick and mortar stores of that nature are going by the wayside. As game, as games get more digital, you get Sony, Microsoft, even Nintendo. You know, pushing they they prefer if you buy digital. Uh, you know, studios don't get anything on the back end for used game sales. So it wouldn't even surprise me um, if. Microsoft and Sony, Nintendo are intentionally making these moves to kind of put them under. I mean, I know well, we've heard in the past that they had problems uh, when Xbox One initially now launched. They were going to completely lock it out from yes. these games, and that was basically them trying to shut down GameStop. We know yeah. they don't particularly enjoy the used game market, but they deal with it because the public backlash would be too great. Right, it, it's a convenience thing, uh, but like we had talked about before we started the episode, is I could even see Microsoft and Sony maybe trial and error, but getting something in place where they are the middleman for these used game sales. Uh, obviously, physical is physical copies are going to be a challenge uh, if they can do some kind of used digital. Uh, that is probably its own headaches, you know, and the logistics behind it. Um, but then essentially reach out to these studios and give them a cut of that profit because right now they take anything over nothing as yeah. much as what they're getting when they That's when people true. are buying used. So, um, one of, uh, well, before we go any further, one of the things that um, I wanted to talk about was a couple months ago I watched a video. There's a YouTube channel called Game Ranks. They do some pretty good stuff about video games, and they did an entire episode about um, brick and mortar stores okay. and basically the only reason the companies still tolerate them if you will is that they kind of create a sense of community when you go in and you can talk to other people about the games that you're going to buy and things like that and that's kind of what keeps GameStop alive is the fact that you go in and it's it's a, almost like a church of games I guess is the best way to put it Okay. so I think GameStop needs to double down on those kind of things personally if they want to keep going maybe do more release parties more things like that Like they need to create more of the atmosphere of the gamer in their stores I know personally the GameStops in our area there is only one employee I can think of there's, there's three within 30 miles of us mm -hmm. and there's only one younger employee who actually seems like he's excited about video games most of them are older people in their like mid 40s and they just don't yeah. seem to care at all about well, it very corporate and they're very now. yeah they're yeah. very corporate very cold and other than that one guy i don't want to talk to them about the games well that's 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 the atmosphere they cultivate you know yeah. what i mean is you get these people in there and essentially you give them marching orders every day to push an agenda or push a product so the people that are passionate about it, it gets to go crap where you eat. You know, I'd, I'd hate to work there. I thought about working at GameStop at one point in my life, and then you read all these horror stories. Yeah. That, that's a terrible place to work, you know. There's, there's no passion in it anymore. It's it's very much, you know, we've got to push this product for the day. So I think, um, yeah, innovation is the key for them. They've, they've got to change things. You know what I'm surprised they haven't done is, uh, we had talked about it, is... Like three months after a new game releases, is why don't they rent themselves? Like, why don't they rent games out of the store? That's but they only do it on like a credit card type basis. So if yeah. you don't bring the game back, you know they just charge you for the full price of the game, and then essentially they got to get the money from you renting. That it is interesting. It seems like a really obvious thing they could do. Yeah, I wonder Isn't if that strange. Ever, I wonder if they've ever explored that. Huh? GameStop, if you're listening, I get a cut for that. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I take back everything bad that I said about you in the past 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so what is going to GameStop going to look like in 10 years? Um, Honestly, I don't even think that there's going to be a GameStop in I, 10 years. I agree. I don't think GameStop will be around in 10 years. And I think, honestly, it'll be better for us as gamers yep. if they aren't. Um, because if you really think about it, 
and this goes back to like I was talking about earlier, what I game ranks this video on this kind of stuff. Um, they brought up a couple good points. Games that you buy digitally cost the same as a physical copy, and when you sit down and think about it, it shouldn't cost the same as a physical copy because there's no production of discs or casing or, right. or packaging, no shipping, no and, art. Yeah. Um, and the reason they do that is because they are they have to kind of have that concession to keep those community brick and mortar stores alive. That parody, yeah. If GameStop, which is hands down the biggest pusher of games, at least in the United States, goes under, then perhaps you know, theoretically the Microsoft, Sony, uh, Nintendo could cut those prices down because they don't have to self compete with GameStop. Yeah, so we package could and ship. see, we right. could, you know, as the gamers, we might end up seeing a drop in price for brand new games that would be a hopeful but probably not because they're greedy companies but you know who knows or pre-owned games you know or older games dropping in price faster than a pre-owned game because i mean you can go into gamestop and you could go look for i'll give you an example i wanted to get grand theft auto 5 okay and the brand new copy was uh on sale for 25 dollars okay it's still a 60 dollar game because it's so popular but a used copy was 40 so you know, it 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 doesn't make sense that the one, and we know those sales come from the publishers. When a sale on a, u, a new game happens, it's a publisher push thing. Right. But what will happen is you'll go in. I want that new one, and conveniently, the new ones aren't on the shelf anymore. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of confusion surrounding the industry. I feel like because you know, as something physically deteriorates, the price should reflect that. I mean, you wouldn't go to a car dealership and expect to pay more for a used car. No. So that's I don't understand how GameStop is is getting away with some of their moves that are making. I guess it's bad, lack of a better option, um, and we're seeing other markets expand, but we haven't really seen a true competitor rise from the ashes. You get places like Best Buy, I think, are actually doing. They're starting to get into used market. Yeah, they I have for their, to trade. They have really interesting too. Um, I used to have a friend that was in their game club or something like that and okay. in, in the club he could if he pre-ordered games through them he actually got 10 percent off right off the oh. top and used games he got like 20 percent off or something like that and i used to use him for uh to pre-order a few games because it was at 10 percent right off the top gone so i mean that's an interesting way to to fight against gamestop by another company an innovative way that GameStop has nothing like that. Right. And I mean, even I heard, uh, which I, that's kind of, side note, that's kind of funny to me because I'm a part of every club that has ever been invented, <laughs> even the one that you are making now to prove to me that I'm not a part of every club. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's funny to me because Walmart and Best Buy actually have more of a presence. I mean, obviously GameStop can occupy a smaller space, so it's easier to them for them to kind of serpentine or slip in and out of neighborhoods, if you will. But if Walmart and Best Buy are pushing that agenda where they want to get into used game sales, uh, they already have the stores to do it. So I'm surprised that no serious competitor has come forward and like really made GameStop kind of grab their axes and go to war. Walmart would be an interesting one because I tell you, from personally, if personally, if I could trade a game into Walmart and get the same amount of you know in-store credit for Walmart as GameStop. I would do that because I could go... I don't have to buy a game. I can go buy groceries with that. Yeah. I mean, I could see people flocking to Walmart to sell off their their used games, and then they would be able to strangle the market. Well, that's what I don't understand is they have. The, to the best of my knowledge is they were accepting used games. Or maybe that's not true. Uh, somebody fact check me on that. Um, but I had read an article that they were at least very interested in getting into it. I don't know if they ever rolled that out or not. Uh, I try not to talk to anybody at Walmart. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's head down and just me. go. Yeah, that's eye contact. You know, let's let's avoid that at all costs while we're there. But <laughs> but um, you know, it's funny because like we said, is in ten years we don't think GameStop will exist, or at least the brick and mortar version won't. Um, and they should be going to you know online sales only. But if you've checked out their marketplace lately, first of all, Amazon cheaper. Almost across the board on every Steam, game. Steam, when older games. Yeah, and fun fact, um, Amazon actually has that, that pre-order-esque uh, thing that you were talking about with Best Buy. Is it's it's uh, money off and it's free shipping. And you get it the day of. I, it's funny. So I just got Final Fantasy XII and I've been playing that lately. And I had some gift cards left over uh, from Christmas because that's all I asked for for this year. Is I figured I'll just pre-order all the games that I want for the year and then I won't have to pay out of pocket for anything. So I was going to pre-order it from GameStop 
like the week before, and it would have arrived two days after it was released, and I would have had to have paid.